This video will show you how awesome Reactor 2.0 is and how you can use it to set up your Stream Deck for broadcast device control. Of course, the Blue Pill server plays a central role in this. This is what runs the Reactor UI that you are seeing right here. So there's no computer in between. There's no PC, no Mac, no Linux computer except the Linux inside of this guy. So you need the raw panel server or you need one of the Skahoy panels. Excuse me for the red sides. This is an experimental model I made just because I'm sometimes also looking for fun. And uh, yeah, the, my main point here is that there's a USB-A plug on the back side. So you can actually plug in your Stream Deck into this device. That's what I'm going to do right now on this blue pill. Okay, so the Stream Deck is powered up. But before we can actually use it for anything with the uh, blue pill, we need to install. And let's just search for Stream Deck here in packages. You see there's a package from Stream Deck right there, uh, XPanel Stream Deck. And if we go into this one, we'll want to select Auto Start. And then we'll just start the application as well. And that usually yields a little Skahoy animation. You see that happening right there. And the moment after, it will tell you that it's ready for connections. So really now, this Stream Deck is on the network. We can access it using Telnet. We can um, read and write commands from it because it's a raw panel device. It states its own IP address down here in the corner. OK, so I'll just put that here on the table because what you'll see now is that I can basically go to the home screen. I can add a panel, discover panels on the network, and I find the Stream Deck MK2, uh, it's on the same IP address as my blue pill, but it is an, on this particular port number. So when I select this, it's connecting to the Stream Deck. And now if I, let me just check here, you can see that uh, it is identifying itself by uh, white bars in the top. So the default way we manage the Stream Deck is we use a portion of the display to show the color of a button. Because usually on Skahoy panels, it's a little bit smarter. We have a button that has a color in itself. It can be dimmed, it can be highlighted, it can be off. And then we have displays on top above the buttons. So this is separated out, but obviously not on, not on the Stream Deck. So we are using a part of the display for that. It can be disabled if you want to use the full display for icons and so on. But this is really cool in this context. We'll create a new configuration. We'll just name it something fun like stream. OK, we should not have those special characters in there. OK, so we'll just do this stream. So this configuration name is being used in a moment in the configuration tab. But before we do so, I would like to add a device to control. That would be an atom switcher, for instance. So it's very, very easy. Uh, to add devices in a reactor, usually most of them, many of them can be discovered. Some of them also cannot be discovered. So if I discover a device like this, I just select and save and we are connected. And I want to do the same to my smart video hub. So it's right here. Now I have two devices. I could also add more. I could add a PVC camera. I know I have a UE150 camera on this network, so I would be able to add that one and type in the IP address of it like this and then save. And you'll see that it's connecting to this Panasonic high-end PVC camera as well. But anyway, the main point is how configuration works in Reactor 2.0. So here you see the Stream Deck. Well, it's not white, but it is, you know, the, uh, the panel here. What happens if I press buttons? Does something happen? Maybe a little bit. Maybe if I have this one enabled, I'm just looking for some fun. Yeah, you see, it is actually picking buttons. Now, that's not the point of this demo today. Now, what I want to show you quickly is let's start configuring this for atom control. So we'll just drag across the buttons on the lower side of the stream deck, and then we'll assign this to, to let it be a preview select row. Okay. So I did that with one click behaviors over here, picking ME1, input number one. So it's now all green. You see it right there. It says camera number one. But of course, we want to have camera one, two, three, four. So I use the batch editor to do this. The batch editor allows those four buttons to be easily changed on a number of parameters like that ME row or that input. And it's only the input that we want to be sequential like this. But now you see it already. It is reflected in the displays. So and I can even use the buttons already. You see the reflection on the screen as well. So ah, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Yes. And then we go up here. We can do the same for program select. So let's quickly do that. Pick the ME row that we want. Input number one, use the batch editor. One, two, three, four. Boom. And there we are. So what we want next would be to have a cut button right here. So let's see, atom, atom is probably transition cuts. And yeah, we still need to tell it which ME row it is. Yes, thank you. And 
let's put in the auto button and select the ME row number one. Let's try it. Cut, 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 auto. I somehow just can't imagine this could be any more slick than I've just shown you. This is so uber, uber, uber cool. Not uber cool. I wonder if that name has anything to do with the German word uber. Uber means great, beyond. Awesome in general. Okay, so what is the next thing I want to do? I want to show you guys how we can make new pages on top of this. All right. So I'll just add a new page and I want to use that for auxiliary control. So I'll do that, but I will make it a non-transparent page. And that is to mess a little bit with you because I'll show you why that is generally a bad idea, but it means it's most likely so that the auxiliary, uh, the way I just created a new page now is what you would expect. In other words, if I go to that page, just like if you configured a stream deck, you see blank canvas. You can put anything you want on these buttons. They are just overriding whatever's on the background behind you. So we can drag across these. We could say auxiliary output, auxiliary select. Let's pick which auxiliary channel we are dealing with. And that let's pick this input batch edit once again. One, two, three, four. We are on an ATEM mini, so there's not so many choices though. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, we could actually make a little shift level because there are some sources that we might want to have. Um, so let's make a shift key up here, actually, um, because you see there's like this shifted state, actually. Yeah. So maybe on this one, on the auxiliary um, page, on the shifted state, let's add auxiliary select to something else. And we just pick these inputs. Uh, in fact, I'll just pick one of them at a time because then I can better select them from this drop down. Because I have something like, you know, uh, that would be color bars. And I know this is on my ATA Mini, which is my target currently. Um, color number one, color number two. Yes, there we go. And then finally, media player. Okay, let's try this out. Let's try this out. Media player number one. Okay. So basically going between these two pages, sh normal shifted state, normal and shifted. So basically one thing is you have pages, right? But inside a page, you also have another dimension, the shift level, like holding down shift on your keyboard, or as you know, from broadcast switches, there's typically a shift function that you can enable. So we built in this, we built this in by default so that that was uh, available to you. Now we need to have something to do this shift action. So we'll just do that and then use a shift hold down, assign it to this one up here. And that should actually, if we do this, it should let us go between these two. Ah, okay. So now actually what happened is that I was a little bit stupid because I put this shift action up on the shifted layer itself. And um, that's that's actually a bad idea. So I'll just delete this behavior and then go back to the normal layer here because this is where I want to put the shift action. Shift hold down. So like that. Okay, let's try it out on the stream deck. I'll just push it. And um, yeah, it is surely changing, but somehow it is not changing what I intended it to do because I want to see something else up here on the shifted level. Why don't I see that? Did I somehow, maybe I just happened to delete those. Uh, I should revert back a few times. So I can show you the undo function. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I did. I somehow managed to delete everything, including those five actions, uh, behaviors that we have down here. Sometimes I'm sorry that I'm confusing actions and behaviors and so on. Actions is the word, you know, from Stream Deck, from probably Companion, many other places. We have decided on the term behavior because it includes not just what the button does, but also how the feedback coming back to it is represented in the display. So this is why behavior is like capturing both things. But I get confused myself from time to time. Action is a good word. If I'm on this level, let me just go right there and just delete this guy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So before I managed to delete everything else, ah, you just saw the undo function in action, right? On the normal, I can now go and pick my shift hold down. Okay. Let's try it. Yes. Thank you. That works just fine. Now, the thing is this, 
I want to go from the background to the auxiliary page by some kind of navigation, right? But actually a larger problem is my intention here was that I um, actually wanted the shift function to be available globally. And now it's on the aux layer. And also I just wanted to override these buttons and still have access to my cut and auto and the lower row of buttons. So there's ways we can do that right now. We can actually like drag across here and then we can delete these behaviors on the auxiliary layer because there are in fact empty behaviors. And that will knock a hole in the auxiliary layer. You see, I'm basically punching a hole in the auxiliary layer or the auxiliary page. I, I can also do it up here. So that all that is defined on the auxiliary page are these four and a shift level. And as I'm going to the auxiliary layer, I'm still seeing my preview row and I still see my cut button and my auto button. All right, so as I'm now on the background, no, on the auxiliary layer, you can see that I'm still able to do my preview select and do my cut. Okay, preview, cut, 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 cut. That is all fine. Auto, that's also fine. Nice. And I have this one that will help me to navigate to, I can now hold this down and then I can select this one, these ones for my auxiliary. Let's let's check it with the ATEM software control. See, this is our auxiliary up here. So let me see. I can pick those and ah uh, yeah okay I cannot pick these actually these sources are apparently not allowed on my auxiliary output for the Atom Mini. It is on some of the other ones, other switches. So um, that's that's cool. That's cool. And actually, um, I just wanted to show you that the normal way you think about a page paradigm, it is like overlaying everything. But the default way you create pages inside of this engine is by creating transparent pages. And that's what we should have done from the start. So let's say that we want to do the same with macros. Then we would just make a macros page that's transparent. And if I go to this one, you see that that everything on this layer is not defined yet. Or everything on this page. Everything on this page is not defined yet. We see what is on the background. Right now, when I click background, you see these are the 10, act 10 buttons highlighted by a green border that are defined on the background. If I go to this, the aux layer, you find these four and this one, five buttons are defined with a behavior on the auxiliary layer. And if I go to macros, nobody, none are basically. But if I wanted to do the same just across these buttons, I could basically do that. Go in here, find my macros and say, let's play a macro, let's choose a macro number, let's batch edit these, plus one. Oh, no, 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 no. One, 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 one. It's the macro number that I want to do. Okay, device index would be a mess. Okay, so now we have macro one, two, three, four, uh, four here that I can play back. And I also want to give them a different color, thank you, so that they are more easy to distinguish. So we'll just do this um, and turn the intensity uh, on on this. Maybe we don't have macros on this particular one, but just for illustration purpose, you can now see this is how it is here. So once again, if I go between these pages, you can see auxiliary, we have macros over here, but now we want navigation, right? That's the next thing you want to do. So we'll basically uh, take these uh, three buttons and create navigations for our pages. And that is as easy as anything else we've done. Just go to go to page, we'll pick background, we'll then uh, either we can go to batch edit and then the match value, which is a cryptic term, but this is actually page one, two, three that we would set here. We could either do that and just click one, two, three like that. And then we would have it working. However, it doesn't look like it's going to work, but it is. So let me just show you. This is background. This is okay. I was not right. I did a mistake again. You know what I just did? And that's the confusing part about having these transparent pages. I created my navigation on the macros page. Hmm. Well done, Casper. Let's just remove these behaviors. Confirm. Okay, go back to background. So think background layer normal, which is what is going to be transparently available from any layer on top, unless you override it. Let's just pick those and go to page, pick my pages batch edit. If I do that, it's going to be almost fine. The not so fine thing is, I mean, now it's going to work. You can see that it is working. And again, because I defined them on the background layer, but they are 
the other layers are oh, sorry pages are transparent pages and layers are the same this is why i'm saying page <laughs> layers all this all the time but um if i click this one you see that the label is actually freely uh chosen so this is um we could call this switching and then it will say switching in the um in the label here if i click on this one it could be aux and uh, on the last one, I could say macros, but you can also just reuse it and then macros is going to be put in. So those those labels are, in fact, uh, done like that. Um, this, uh, OK, slight advanced trick. Um, if you go in here, show more, then you can probably manage this one to set text size a little differently. Text size, I think 1.2, that's, you know, narrow. If you do that, then it's going to be narrow like those because sometimes it's not super cool if it's big like this. But by the way, this is also how you could... Um, ah, no, not add behavior. By the way, that's another interesting thing. Um, uh, undo! Thank you! Okay, yeah, um, nice. I want my navigation to have some other colors. So I definitely want to have my ice color is what we usually use for navigation. Okay, let's try the simulator. And of course, the simulator works just like my stream deck. So I can use this to change between these different things. Auxiliary always access to my preview row cut and auto buttons are just in place so i can run my tv production show 